Walter from Media Mics here with a look at the Pink Floyd tribute band, Brick Floyd. The band returned to the magnificent Hershey Theater stage with their Pulse production on Tuesday, March 12th. Their tour is a celebration and faithful recreation of Pink Floyd's legendary Division Bell tour, complete with a magnificent laser and light show and iconic, iconic circular screen. The show featured classic tracks from Pink Floyd's Division Bell album and much more. As expected, Rick Floyd again was flawless as they took the sold out crowd on a journey back to the 70s and the golden age of rock and roll with philosophical lyrics and musical perfection. Ian Cattell and Ido Squirto once again thrilled the crowd with their masterful guitar playing and vocals. Ryan Saranich captured the crowd with his sax and Eva Avila earned another standing ovation for her rendition of Great Gig in the Sky. The addition of Harry Waters to the stage with his immense talent added to the magic. When Damien Darlington played comfortably numb near the end of the concert, it was obvious that the audience had become part of the journey. If you like the music of Pink Floyd, you must see Brit Floyd when they are in your area. You will not be disappointed. I had the opportunity to sit down with Harry Waters and Eva Avila before the concert to chat with them about their music. Take a look at what they had to say. Yeah. We're going to get right into the questions, if that's okay. Sure. So the yeah. first one, uh, Harry, I read that you, uh, your piano style was influenced by the classical masters of Vladimir Horowitz, uh, Arthur Rubinstein, and New Orleans greats like Dr. John yeah. and Professor Longhorn. How, do you ex uh, how were you exposed to music um, of Pink Floyd at an early age, and how has that music, as well as the other ones, influenced your musical journey? Yeah, I mean, I grew up listening to my mum's vinyl collection when I was about seven. Uh, she had a huge collection that she, you know, acquired over the years of being, in, you know, in the business. And uh, I picked up Pet Sounds. That was pretty much the first one. And I was about seven, and that just blew me away. So it started from the Beach Boys, and then just grew from there. And she had a bunch of King Crimson and um, Dr. John and th those things that you mentioned. Not the classical stuff. I got into that later. But like the rock and roll, I, I, I discovered through this record collection. Yeah. And then I started playing piano maybe a year later, something like that. I just loved that New Orleans piano style, you know, Alan Toussaint. Hey, how much has Richard Wright's uh, music influenced you at all? Well, I mean, he's such an integral part of, of Pink Floyd and the sound, you know, maybe people think of him as not the least important member because, it, you know, the sum of the parts is always greater than the whole, you know. Um, his sound was really... Uh, Re really important to that sound. So I've listened to it a great deal over the last 25 years, you know, trying to sort of copy it and, you know, do the music justice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I heard you just recently had a birthday. I did. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Pushing 40. Uh, Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, but as a vocalist with Brick Floyd, how do you approach interpreting the iconic vocals of Pink Floyd? Uh, repertoire while keeping your own style and personality as part of it? Well, I come from, um, growing up I came from more of a pop background, a lot of soul, Motown. Uh, my dad's Peruvian, so we had, and my mom's French Canadian, so we had all sorts of styles of music. Um, and then I started, my first two albums were very, very pop, pop R&B. And then I kind of um, dipped my toes in the rock world when I started working with a cover band in Montreal who introduced me to the Pink Floyd universe. I must have been in my early 20s. I knew, you know, the, the, big, the big ones, but I really, really dove in head first when we, we did a show called The Wall Experience. We did all of The Wall, so I completely got immersed. And I was quite charmed. I was like, this is, this is something else. I, I understand why this music ages so well. Um, and I think that what we do with Brit Floyd is we try to honor as authentically as possible their music. So that's why, you know, we, it's so flattering when people say like, oh, note for note, it sounds identical. And some people even say like, oh my God, it's like, it's as if I was listening to Pink Floyd. And I think that's the goal. And the amazing musicians that um, I share the stage with have that attention to detail and that dedication. And for me as a vocalist, like I've done pop, I've done soul, I've done R&B. 
I've discovered over the years that I, I can do a little bit of rock. Um, I have that little rock fiber in me somewhere, I guess. Um, and then I've been doing this with Brit Floyd for seven years now, and I'm still absolutely loving it. It's amazing, amazing how, you know, after thousands of shows now, I'm still not tired of it. It's completely, it's such a privilege to be able to keep this music, music alive year that's, after year. That's fantastic. Uh, I was introduced to uh, Pink Floyd many, many years ago, and uh, the first time I saw Brit Floyd, actually in this theater. Oh, really? Um, I was taken by uh, how, how accurate, you know, it really was. I was pretty familiar with how accurate the music was with Pink Floyd, you know. And you really, the band really does a fantastic job of, of honoring that music. They absolutely do. Uh, the next few questions are for both of you. Okay, and who can, whoever wants to go first is fine. Uh, Pink Floyd's music is known uh, for its depth and uh, complexity. How do you balance and stay faithful to the original recordings um, and yet still own, add your own personal touch? Whoever would like to go first. I think that's more of a Damien question personally, but I know that as hard as he works and we work collectively to be as authentic and as close. I mean, my husband's uh, Edo, the, the second guitar player. So I live with him. I see how leading up to a new tour, he will spend days, hours, entire nights working on sounds, perfecting it, just like staying up all night, trying to get, and it's, sometimes he's frustrated, like, oh, it's still not close enough. And I listen, I was like, it's pretty darn close. He's such a perfectionist. I think everybody on the stage is such a perfectionist, which makes all these musicians really world class. Um, at the end of the day, you just you, you do the best you can with the resources and the talent that you have. Um, is it ever going to be identical? Of course not. You can't recreate magic that was once created, you know, sure. decades ago. But I think they do a very, very good job. And f I feel like I have the easy job as the vocalist because, you know, I don't have to spend hours in the studio and all the all the technology for me. That's that's not my department. But do you want to? Yeah, I mean, but, you know, on the, the B3 is such a sort of, uh, like, but not, and yet it's background. Although it's always there, if you take it away, then you really, it's conspicuous by its absence. But it's not, it's not the guitar solos. You know, everyone knows every note of those guitar solos. <coughs> How they're supposed to, the sound of the guitar is such a personal thing. You know, um, it's much easier to sort of, uh, not, not bluff, but like you, you don't have to work quite so hard on, on a B3 to get the sound as you want it. As long as the drawbars are in roughly the right place and you play roughly the right notes, no one's going to know the difference. You know, it's not to say I haven't listened and really learned and done exactly what, you know, learned exactly what Rick was playing, but there's more license to be, to sort of veer off the rails a little bit. Mm -hmm. With the guitar, if you veer, people are going to, people oh, are going yeah. to comment. Oh, you know, no, no, yeah. right. You missed one note, they know, right? Yeah, then they know, right. In fact, right. Damien so, and I talked about that when we did it yeah. with him. He tried to be, tries to get it exactly. Yeah, right. yeah meticulous. Yeah. Like, and I think it's what, what the ma when the magic happens is, be is when everybody does their homework really, really well. When it comes together, there's that sort of, the texture of the music, the, the actual feel, the atmosphere, what it's supposed to emote, like, that's when the magic happens because everybody's just so dedicated and, yeah, hopefully we're doing it right because people keep coming here. Keep here. coming. You keep selling out <laughs> venues. So you must be doing something. Very, very good. Can you share any insights from uh, the rehearsal process with Brit Floyd? Um, how do you and the band pull it? You talked a little bit about it already, but how, how do you and the band pull it that together? How does that cohesion work? I didn't have He's such a bro, he just gets I, I just turned and off and plays play, that so I, I can't, you know, I can't talk about it. My first rehearsal was like the first gig, I mean... It was like the soundtrack, basically. Yeah, it was the soundtrack. Just ran through the a few songs. Gig. Yeah, yeah. You know. But we rehearse, um, on average, um, a couple of weeks every year before the before the new tour. It's a different set list every single year, so mm -hmm. this year we're honoring the Vision Bell, of course, and the Pulse Tour. Um, we rehearsed two weeks in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, and again, months prior to that, people do their homework. Like I said, Ido was in the studio at home in Italy, just days, weeks, hours and hours, much, you know, early January, he was already mm -hmm. hard at work. Um, and for me, you know, I just, most of these songs I've already done over the years, many, many times. So it's just refreshing my memory, it's muscle memory, uh, brushing up on the our little dance routines sure. and 
re-familiarizing myself with the originals because sometimes you can, you with time you get comfortable you kind of veer off from the original and our goal is to be as authentic as possible sometimes you just re-listen to the original to make sure you're being authentic can you share any uh, memorable experiences uh, that co might come to mind uh, from the Rick Floyd tours I know you just came on board with Rick Floyd but uh, either way well we in 2019, we were on stage during a big earthquake in Bakersfield, That's California. Right. Yeah, we had to get off the stage. It was it was a big one. I forget. Wow. It was a big, big one. Um, you actually had to get off the stage? Oh, yeah. It was during the um, happiest days of our lives. It was during the 40 years of the wall. Mm -hmm. And Bakersfield, California, we were on stage. And then all of a sudden, we felt... I, I knew right away that it was an earthquake. A few people said, oh, I was wondering if it was the bass because it was during the intro with the helicopter sounds. I knew it was an earthquake, I just felt it, I said, this is happening. And um, on the right side of the stage, Damien and Ido and Ian, apparently they didn't feel anything. They had to get rushed by the guitar techs and get off the stage. Me and the, the two other girls, I don't know if it was because we were in heels, but we felt it. Yeah, and we rushed <laughs> off the stage and, and we had to wait half an hour to get back on stage. That, that was very, very memorable. And there's even video of it on YouTube. You can see the screen shaking and the, oh, wow. the over, yeah, it was, um, it was something. Anything memorable so far? Uh, not so far. No, I mean it's all been great, but you know, I've just maybe no week, memorable so. event is a good thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Earthquake experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no yeah. earthquake here yeah. in Hershey. Yeah. Uh, Pink Floyd's music uh, carries some profound messages, you know. And what do you think makes their music so timeless? Well, I mean, the lyrics are still current. You know, uh, they still kind of relate, and I, I would hope that they would always relate, you know, the, uh, not the political content, but the, 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 com the commentary on life, you know, mm -hmm. I'm you and what I see is me. Yeah. When dad was asked about, you know, what his message was, he says, it's always been the same thing. That's the line from Echoes, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, us and them, it's just about bringing people together for the most part, you know. Um, and people will always relate to that, I think. I, so. yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, and may I add that musically, um, Every single album is such a masterpiece, is such a masterpiece, that just, it just ages really, really well. It's just, I think in decades from now, we're going to, well, maybe not us personally, but we're going to hopefully keep this music alive. Um, that's why we're so pleased when we see parents bring their children, their teenagers, because it's passed on from generation to generation. It's like this, this kind of music is, is completely unique, and we're trying to make it live on for forever it's just it's just that good and it's again trying to recreate magic not always happens but we do the best we can what struck what has struck me so far in a couple of times i've seen you guys is that there, there's sure, certainly plenty of, plenty of people in the audience my age you know who grew up when pink floyd started you know and got famous <clears throat> but there are a lot of young people i mean really young people they're that. really into the music yeah. mm -hmm. and that is so cool that is cool. We're always mm -hmm. excited to see kids and, and teenagers and they're rocking out and they love it and they, they genuinely love it. It's not just, oh, well, my parents dragged me and yeah, it's a good show. No, they love it. So, well, love it. Uh, he can tell you as well, you know, just in our family, either you really love the music or you don't like it. <laughs> I mean, and that's okay. You know, everybody has their own uh, views of music and things mm -hmm. like they like. But, but the ones who really like it, really like it. That's what they listen to on the radio. They, yeah, it's on their playlists, and that's just it. You know. um, what advice would you give to aspiring musicians uh, who are interested in delving into the world of progressive rock? Wow, practice hard and lots. <laughs> that's the best advice. You know, if you want to play prog rock, I mean, this is relatively easy prog rock, but if you want to play like King Crimson or I, I don't know, it's Mahavishnu Orchestra mm -hmm. or Billy Cobham. You've got to put your 10,000 10, hours in, at least, you know. That's probably the best advice, you know. They do say, apparently, to, to give 10,000 10, hours to anything and you can become an expert at it. At it. It's, um, when I grew up, my dad used to tell me, um, practice, practice, practice. Or practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. Obviously, nothing makes perfect. Mm -hmm. But the more you do something, the more it becomes an automation and, you know, you get yeah. your muscle memory going. Yeah. But then, personally, I don't know if everyone like that but for me when I become so used to doing something that it becomes muscle memory then I can kind of sit back and go okay my body knows what to do that's automatic now how can I 
just get lost in the performance and the interpretation and the emotion and what I'm trying to uh, convey to the audience. I want to, you know, music is, and especially a live concert, it's, it's a chance for the audience to travel with you, to travel mm -hmm. somewhere. So that you can kind of just focus on that and just mm -hmm. let the magic happen. But yeah, practice, practice, discipline, perseverance, and uh, remembering that, you know, even Michael Jordan uh, missed, uh, I don't know, but you sure practiced a lot of them. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Never giving up. I say you're shaking your head there about yeah, yeah. the audience traveling with you. You've had the yeah. same sentiment. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, if, you had to, if you could open a show for any artist in the world, aside from Rick Floyd, who would it be? You mean if I could be in any band? What do you mean by open a show? Be the opening okay, act. Okay. Be the support for any band. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I wouldn't want to be the support, I'd want to be in the band. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Grateful Dead or... Um, You're a Grateful Dead fan? Yep, yeah. yeah. My second job was in a Grateful Dead tribute band. Okay. Yeah, I love that music. You know, Led Zeppelin maybe, Black Sabbath, okay. something like yeah, that. I like Black Sabbath. Yeah. 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 You're hitting all of my favorite bands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little Feet, the Allman Brothers. You know, Allman Brothers. Like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a great How about The Doors? Yes, the Doors. I mean, they had a couple of good songs, you know, but I'm not, I never dove in. I never put the Doors on. They were, they were always on, and I always heard it and thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I was into other music, you know, uh, at the same own, time. They uh, had their own past. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were great, though. They were great. What do you think? I can't pick. I mean, I did open for Beyonce in 2009, and that was a huge bucket list. It's not a band, but that was pretty incredible. Was Nikki on drums? You know Nikki Glaspie? I don't remember all of them by name. BB was on guitar. Okay. It was the her I Am Sasha Fierce tour where she had an all female band. Yeah, I mean Nikki's a girl. Yeah, okay. black girl, like sort of short dress. She might have. Yes, she okay. very might might very well may have been. Yeah. Uh, such a great tour. I just I got to watch it every single night. It was insane. Uh, band, good lord, I can't, I don't know. There's too many good ones. There's, There's too, too many, many good My ones. brain is yeah. like a little overloading right now. Well, this kind of uh, uh, goes into the next question here. Other than Pink Floyd music, what other kind of music do you listen to? I mean, I just gave you a bunch, you know. Yeah, you I, do, I, I love prog rock, you know, I love Mahavishnu Orchestra, and Billy Cobham and Jeff Beck. And Chick Corea, but then I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, I love Jeff Beck. Yeah, I'm actually learning with a buddy, we've got a side project, we're going to do all of Wired and Blow by Blow, which are my, nice. two, two of his favourite records, and, you know, my, my favourite two records. Um, but I listen to a lot of classical, a lot of jazz. My kids are named after Oscar Peterson and Bill Evans, uh, Stan Gabs. Uh, I was just thinking about piano players, but Oh, I mean so much, but I love the meters, like lots of funk music I listen to, but lots of heavy metal as well, like the Sugar, you know, um, Sepultura back in the day, and I mean it's just impossible to, to name everyone. Neil Young, the Beatles, you know, Buddy Holly, Little Richard, he was my childhood hero, Little Richard, I met him actually. So it's, you know, it's too many to mention. What I found interesting is oftentimes when we ask that question, <coughs> they're totally different groups or types of music that yeah. you play. Yeah. yeah. And it's just mm -hmm. kind of curious to see how you yeah. what do you think? Um I have a very pretty varied playlist that I like to listen to, everything from pop to hip hop, like old school nineties, early two thousand hip hop, yes. Um Ido got me into Dream Theater a little bit, which is growing on me more and more. Um yeah, I'm a fan of the Motown era very much. Oh, yeah, Jackson Five, like Stevie Wonder, yeah. yeah, Supremes. Yeah, Stevie Wonder. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's. Uh, I love all the Phil Spector stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the Ronettes and all, I all wanna, of that. I grew up on all of that. Is, speaking of school, Phil Spector, I want to get the girls to watch uh, Twenty Feet from Stardom. I've okay, not seen it. Well, we, yeah. me and Jen have. Yeah. Chess has not. Yeah. Been like, we have to make you yeah, watch good. that. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. So good. Yeah. Yeah, that era was yeah. spectacular. That's yeah. great, that's great. He's in prison, isn't he? He's like forever now. I think so, yeah. is he? Yeah. Oh shoot. I think so. If he's still alive, he didn't die, did he? I don't think he's still alive. No, I'm pretty sure he's in prison, you know, forever. Yeah, he, he... Yeah. Oh, got himself in trouble quite a bit. He was obviously deranged, you know, like 
bit of a living attack. What I find interesting is um, it just not music, not musicians so much, but um, NFL um, basketball athletes at the top of their game, and somehow, you know, they go out and they do these crazy things that end up in trouble. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're making, won, won, you're making a lot of money. Totally. You're the cosmic lottery. You know, yeah, like, you why, why fuck it up? Don't screw it up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, they are human. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why they screw it up. Yeah, that's a good point. That's why they screw it up. I have one more question for both of you, and um, you might find this interesting. I know Damien did. What was the one question you wished I would have asked you today and didn't? I've been asked every single question, so I can't think, like everyone over the years in interviews. Um, I don't know, I did an interview a couple of months ago, and most people always ask the same sort of questions, and this guy asked me almost all exclusively questions I've never been asked before. Yeah, yeah. They were things not even related to me, they were like, what does money mean to you? You know, it was like much more sort of existential and philosophical and... You know, that was an interesting one because everyone has different thoughts about money and what it means to them and stuff. That was an interesting one. I can't remember some of the others, but that was the one that stuck with me that I've never been asked before or since, you know. Um, so maybe that one. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm. Well, I did an interview a few months ago where this guy did his research like I like never anyone else had ever interviewed me before. He dug up, dug up things from my past. Um, early performances that I had done back in my hometown and mm -hmm. in Ottawa on TV with my dad and that was just so refreshing because it's so long ago that most people will look do a bit of research on me and see like my most recent projects um, but that was that was incredibly refreshing because there he was bringing up things that I had forgotten about myself my first early on experiences um, but yeah, no, there's, I think that for, for, for what this is, I think you asked the perfect questions to cover you know, I will add one more. What do you want your fans to know about you? Just how much we love the music, I guess. You know, that we're there trying to make it, uh, make it as good as we can for, for that, you know? Yeah, that, um, repeating myself but our, our, our goal when we step on that stage is to really take them on a journey and just give them that experience because we do this night after night it gets sometimes a little repetitive but for them it, sometimes it's the event of the year like yeah. they wait all year to come to come yeah, to our like show. a lifetime you know, show Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and I noticed people really love nostalgia people yeah. say oh I was mm. transported to my teenage years at dark yeah. side of the moon and this and I love that because I can I can relate with other music, but um, yeah, just again, how much we love it and how much we, we hope that we can bring them into our little universe and that they enjoy being a part of the experience as much well, as you we certainly, do. Well, you certainly do, and I follow some of the comments on the Facebook pages and people who uh, were able to get a VIP pass, for instance, oh my God, how'd you get that? Oh my God, you're so lucky. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're going to tell us all about it, and it just goes on and on and on to mm -hmm. 100, uh, you know, sprained uh, comments, but so you know you're doing something. Mm. And can I just say what an honor it is to have you with us? It's just Thank such you. a privilege. Yeah. Oh, One fun. for I'm going to be old and gray talking to my grandkids. I'm going to tell them about this. Yeah. It's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, it has been an honor for me and us to. Uh, for you to agree to sit down with us today. Of course, you're welcome. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah.